In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. On this last day of school, it seems fitting to share with you what I hope will be my dying words, my last words. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Listen again to what King David wrote for us in Psalm 51, assigned for us this week. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. And God does this for each of us. He delivers that promise of forgiveness here in this space each week. We gather here for chapel on Wednesday mornings during the school year, except today being the last day of school. And we gather here for church, for worship on Sunday mornings all year. And yes, the school is going to be closed beginning today all summer. And that is a relief probably to all of you. But the church remains open. And I hope that it will remain open until the last day of the world. On that day, in that moment, Jesus Christ will come back in the same way that he left. He ascended into heaven, disappearing from the sight of his apostles in a cloud. And he sits now at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, as part of the omnipresent God. And he will, on that last day, publicly declare his judgment of every single person who has ever lived. And that's why King David writes what he writes. And that's why I say the last words that I want to be are what they are. What about those transgressions? What about those sins? What about this coming judgment? Well, this is why Jesus came to this world in the first place. This is why the Spirit gathers us together each week in worship. Our Lord took on our flesh in order to take on our sin. Throughout this year, each of us has fallen short of God's glory and perhaps our teacher's expectations. And this is true for all of us, even a student who only got an A- minus all the way back in fourth grade, and nothing lower since that time. When we chase after our sinful and selfish desires, when we fail to complete the work that is given to us by God, by those he places over us, in a school setting now and in life as you grow up, we are guilty of trespassing God's good law. And we cannot blot out our own sin. We can't remove it. Death follows it. And this is why I want my last words to be what David says too. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Though we cannot escape what follows our sin, in this life, we are very good at ignoring it. We're good at justifying it or making up reasons for why it's okay. We're good at saying God will understand or that he doesn't see this sin as a problem because I'm doing it. Of course, none of this is true and this is why we need a rescue. This is why we need God to be merciful to us. Our psalm points also to a washing. David writes, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. King David knew his sin and wrote this psalm in response to seeing it clearly by the words of the prophet Nathan. A very serious pile of sin followed his selfish desire for a woman who was not his wife. 
He abused the authority given him to take what he thought he wanted. He lived as though he had done nothing wrong for roughly nine months until it was pointed out. We cannot deny our sin and we cannot get away from it. We try to say in our minds, or perhaps even with our own words, why it's okay that we break God's law. But none of us can actually, truly justify or make right the sins that we commit. Thankfully, God is merciful to us sinners. He does not leave us holding on only to our guilt. He gives us hope. He gives us that washing. He washes us in the waters of holy baptism. He feeds us with his Son's true body and blood, strengthening that baptismal promise. He speaks to us daily through his word, and it points us to our Savior Jesus Christ. David knew his guilt, and he repented. He let go of his sin. He accepted also the heartbreaking consequences that followed it. You can read all about it in the book of 2 Samuel, chapters 11 and 12, and I hope you will. David looked to his coming Savior, who came into our flesh through his own family line. And what's true for David is true for us all. He writes, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We need to be saved from this. We need God to be with us, to work for us, and to stay with us. As a school, we sing the hymn, Abide With Me, throughout this last month of school, the month of May. And as we sing it, we are reminded again that God does indeed abide or stay with us. He pulls us out of our sin, and he sets us on the path of love and forgiveness. Our lives then serve as a reflection of this promise, and that promise is renewed here in church each week. He does, as David requests, create a clean heart in each of us, and he, he renews us with his right spirit. David says, Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. For some of you, this is the last chapel service that you will attend here at St. John's. So hold on to the promises that God has given you and share them in your life as you go forward under his care. Amen. We stand together and sing the Te Deum. <laughs>